quantum mechanical system where this operator appears is this one. You know what this quantum mechanical, what this Hamiltonian describes? Height is the moment of inertia. So what does this describe? A rotating body, right? I mean, you can make it more complicated if you want. You could have lx squared over 2i x plus ly squared over 2i y plus lz squared over 2 z. So this would be moments of inertia of a rigid body around the principal axis, so that would be more complicated version of it. But, uh, Symmetric one, like a sphere, rotating sphere, that's the kind of one. Now back to our two by two system. So we have a dimensional Hilbert space of states and we have some Hamiltonian which was E1, E0, E0, E2, all constants real, right? And the basic states were 1, which was 1, 0, three objects which are observables because I can actually construct three Hermitian matrices. Remember, observable is a quantity which can be described by a Hermitian matrix. So if we have an operator which is Hermitian, then A represents observable. quantity that can be measured. So I'm going to write three matrices. Sx, which is, I'll put h bar over 2 in front for decoration. Clearly, these are observables. And I have three of them. And all of these observables act on these vectors. It's easy to see how. So, Sx on 1 is h bar over 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 0. Zero, one, so this is h bar over two, two, and s x on two is h bar over two, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, which is h bar over two, so this is five zero, so this is h bar over two. So basically, Sx maps the one state into a two state and two state into the one state. So it switches them, right? Sy does the same thing. You don't have to do much work. The only thing is that it puts different constant in front, right? 
So SY on one will give you minus I H bar over two. SY on two will give you I H bar over two. And then SC on a one will produce one. So we now know how these operators act on our states. So they are Hermitian operators, in other words, they represent an observable, and they map states into themselves. And so the only remaining thing is to figure out what S is. For that we compute the common units. So this is easy. So this is S X S Y minus S Y. This is h y squared over 4, and then I have 0, 1, 1, 0, plus 0, minus i, 0, power n, i, 0, minus 0, minus i, 0, 1, 1, 0, This minus sign, when it's inserted into the matrix, these two matrices are identical. So we end up with h bar squared over 2 i 0 0 minus i. And if I factor out i and h bar, what I'm left with is it's h bar over 2 1 0 0 minus i. So I have the result that this is I H bar S. So you can check the remaining ones. We will have the S I dash J is I H bar epsilon I J K S K. This is the same commutator relation as that of angular momentum. So S is some kind of angular momentum. I don't know if you have ever encountered this before. It is convenient or customary to write this in this form. So S operator is written as h bar over 2 
times a two by two matrix, which is classic, which is conventionally labeled by sigma, and sigma i is known as Pauli matrix. There are three of them. S1, S2, sigma one, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, zero one, one, zero one. Minus I, I zero, one zero, zero minus one. Pauli actually invented those to describe electron spin in a Schrodinger equation because he needed to distinguish the possible orientations of the spin of the electron property that the electron has. Um, sigmas have some algebraic properties which are nice. So you can check that sigma 1 squared is the same as sigma 2 squared, the same as sigma 3 squared, which is 1. Let me do it for one of them. So 0, 1, 1, 0. Themselves actually satisfy a relation, two relationships. S on sigma i sigma j is 2i s on i j. Is that true? some other interesting properties that now the images have. Sigma 1, sigma 2 is minus sigma 2, sigma 1. Or in general, sigma i, sigma j is minus sigma j, sigma i. Provided that i so let's check this one. Zero, one, one, zero. Zero, minus i, i, zero. This is zero. So this is i, right? Zero, zero. This is zero, zero. This is minus i, zero. I sigma 3 and then sigma 2 sigma 1 that this side is 0 minus i i 0 0 1 1 0 
so this is when I multiply, this is zero, minus i, zero, 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 and this is i, zero, which is minus i, c3. So this is satisfied clearly. means that you can write that sigma i, sigma j is, if they are the same, you will get delta ij, the Kronecker symbol, correct? And then if they are different, you will get plus i epsilon ij k sigma k. That comes from here. Sigma 1 times sigma 2 is I sigma 3. Right? So this is the general rule that these three matrices are satisfying. And so commutator and another relationship that has been used will come out immediately after this. So if you do sigma i, sigma j commutator, this is sigma i, sigma j minus sigma j, sigma i. And if you use this here, this is delta i, j plus i, epsilon i, j, k, sigma j minus, the only thing I need to do is a split i and j. And notice that there are several i's in here. There is an i in front, which is square root of negative 1, and then there is an i as an index. But these two are the same, so they cancel each other. So I have i, epsilon i, j, k. And then this one here is the same if I flip i and j, right? So this will give me a factor of two. And another useful one, which follows. So this basically formula embodies the comic here. And then there is another one, which is sigma i of sigma j, which is actually an anti commutator So this is instead of a minus sign, there is a plus. Don't mix this up with the Poisson bracket. Poisson bracket, if I ever need it from now on, I'll write like this. That means anti commutator. Anti commutator. So if I add them up, I have this delta i j plus epsilon plus i epsilon i j. Sigma k plus another one, which is delta j i plus i so j minus k sigma k. Now the terms with epsilons cancel because when I flip these two indices, I get a minus sign, and so I have a rule. 